Hello and welcome to Living the Abundant Life. Encounter God today. I want to thank you for joining me today. Whether you're listening to this broadcast live on my Facebook live page or whether you're listening to this on the replay on my YouTube channel or on my podcast. I want to thank you for joining me. I'm here live every day at 12 Pacific Standard Time or Daylight Time and I want to welcome you. Remember there's no time or distance in the Spirit so whatever is being spoken today from the Lord can minister to you at whatever time you hear this broadcast. So thank you for joining me. Well we're concluding this series, our love series, with first love. We looked at victorious love, healing love, true love, and today we're going to look at first love. So let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together as your body to hear from you the words of truth and love that you would want to speak to us today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask that your anointing would teach us and that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear the revealed truth that you would share with us today. May our hearts be open to what the word of the Lord is for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we're looking at first love. Do you remember what it was like when you were first in love? I can remember those feelings of butterflies in my stomach or the excitement of thinking about that person or looking forward to spending time with that person, doing special things for them and talking to the person that I loved. I couldn't wait to talk or to be with them. Well, that is what our relationship with God should be. That's how God wants our relationship to be with Him. He desires to spend time with us and us with Him by worshiping, praying, and reading His Word, just spending time in His presence. But God not only loves us, but He is good and has good things for us, as we're told in Jeremiah 29 11 and Romans 8 28. Love isn't just a feeling, but a choice. God the Father showed His love for us by sending His Son Jesus to die for our sins, to reconcile us to Himself, and live through Him. John 3, 16, 1 John 4, 9. Jesus reconciled us to the Father and made peace with Him through the blood of His cross. Colossians 1, 19 and 20. We're told in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40, that love fulfills the law or the commandments. Jesus told us the answer about how to love God in John 14, 15, which says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And all of my verses are from the New King James Version, unless I tell you otherwise. So we are to love God and walk in love. We love Him because He first loved us, 1 John 4, 19. Love puts Him first and obeys what He says to do. Let's look at a couple of verses that tell us that. John 15, 10 says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. 1 John 2, 5 But whoever keeps His word... Truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. Well, I had a revelation of God's love in my life when I gave my heart and life back to Jesus on July 29, 1979. Three years before this encounter with Jesus, I had a devastating uh, relationship breakup, and I walked away from the Lord. During those three years, I was not living as I should be, and there was a war that was going on in my heart that was tearing it apart. I wanted to trust God and get right with Him, but I felt I couldn't trust Him because I thought He had failed me. One day I was singing the worship song to the Lord, 
I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Perhaps you remember that song. And as I was singing, I heard Jesus say to my heart and mind, If you love me, you'll obey me. Well, his words took me by surprise, but I knew the scripture verse in the Bible as John 14, 15. And it was at that moment on July 29th, 1979, that I knew I had to make a decision for or against Christ. I'd grown up in a Christian home and learned about God's love. I'd even asked Jesus to forgive me and come into my heart as a young child, but I never really knew his love personally. I was afraid of him and thought I had to be good so that he would love and accept me. As I encountered the Lord Jesus speaking to me on that day, I reflected on the times that he had kept me safe provided for me, and continued to draw me back to him through the Holy Spirit's conviction during the three years that I was away from the Lord. The Bible says it's the goodness of the Lord that leads men to repentance, Romans 2, 4. And that is what I experienced as I reflected on his love and goodness for me. I knew that I needed to choose Jesus Christ because he loved me. And I asked him to forgive me, repented of my sin, and surrendered my life and heart back to him. Instantly, I felt the restoration of my fellowship with him and an outpouring of his love upon me such as I had never felt before. That was a new beginning and intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to spend time with him in prayer, worship, and meditating on his word. I couldn't wait to get up in the morning to spend time with him and to think about him throughout my day. I didn't even want to go to work because I didn't want to leave his precious presence. But I had to go to work. And... The good news is I soon learned that I didn't have to leave him behind and I could think about him and speak to him all throughout my day and he could speak to me. I could live in his presence. So I not only experienced first love, but true love. So all of those things that we talked about that were feelings and that choice that I had made to love the Lord. Uh, Luke 7.47 says, Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And so that was my experience that day, that I knew that I needed a Savior. I knew at that moment that He loved me and forgave me no matter what I had done. Because you see, before that, I used to think of myself as a good person, that I had to try to be good. But no, God's love is unconditional. It's just awesome. <laughs> and so we need to experience His love. Well, we must guard against the things that are trying to distract us in life, such as the things of the world that would lead us astray from His presence and His love. We're to come out from the world and to be separate, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. We must not allow and go back to the things we used to do before Christ that did not glorify Him or things that He told us to let go of. He doesn't want us to remain or go back into bondage from the enemy. Colossians 1, 13 tells us, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. We're called to holiness and to grow in holiness. 1 Peter 1, 16. Holiness, or to be holy, means to be separate or to be separated unto. We'll never be any more righteous than when we received Christ as our Savior because we received His righteousness. But we can grow in holiness as we're set apart unto the Lord. Well, we need to remove idols from our lives because anything that puts um, something before the, the Lord is considered an idol. 
The church needs cleansing as well as our own lives, and Jesus is preparing us to be his glorious bride without spot or blemish. Revelation 19, 7 through 9, and Ephesians 5, 25 through 32. We must follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and allow his power to be, re to be revealed in us and through us. We are the body of Christ on the earth and are called to release his kingdom wherever we go. Jesus, remember, warned us about leaving our first love for him. Revelations 2 verses 4 and 5 tells us, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Hallelujah. I want to thank Apostle Michael Galetta, who's, who's watching my Facebook Live today. We're looking at first love. Well, when we lose sight of His love and commandments by going our own way, we experience negative consequences. Any commandments that He gives us are to keep us safe in His love. Remember how He wanted to walk with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to fellowship with them? Until their disobedience changed their relationship and they became separated from Him. So likewise, our Heavenly Father experienced the pain of love when we walk away from Him and we don't dwell or abide in Him, receiving His love. However, His heart has not changed. That is why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to restore our relationship with Him. He doesn't want to keep good things from us, but give us eternal and abundant, and abundant life. John 3.16 and John 10.10 10. Therefore, we must have a correct perspective on who God is so that we can love and trust Him. Well, God's heart is yearning for you. He wants a deeper walk with you. If you've been away from Him, turn your heart back to Him. He will come and gladly meet you at your point of need. God wants the restoration of your relationship and to manifest His love. So ask His forgiveness and repent for any place in your life that you've turned from your first love of Him. Then ask the Holy Spirit what you need to do to restore intimacy in your relationship with the Father and obey what He tells you to do. Our love for Him grows as we spend time in His presence through worship, prayer, and meditating on the Word of God and by putting Him first. Then, when you have a revelation of God's love, you can't help but love Him and share His love with others. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining me today as we looked at First Love, concluding our love series. If you'd also like to uh, read my blog, you can find that on my website at alexiscarucci.com on Twitter, Instagram, and on my Facebook page, Living the Abundant Life. I post that on Wednesdays at 5 Pacific Standard Time. So let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, because of your love for us. Thank you that as we have meditated on your love, that we can't help but love you because you are such an awesome Father. You are so loving. Your love is unconditional. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what we have done, you are willing to forgive if we would just turn back to you. That's your heart to bring restoration and healing and deliverance. Everything that we need to walk in the abundant life that Jesus Christ came to give us. So I ask, Father, now that you'd forgive us for any sin and unrighteousness where we have turned aside from you and we have put other things first in our lives besides you. Lord, help us by the power of your Spirit and by your grace to walk in that first love that you have called us to, to be that glorious bride without spot or blemish, and that we would be the body of Christ here 
releasing your kingdom on this earth wherever we go. Lord, help us to love others as you love us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, once again, thanks for joining me. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May uh, he give you his grace and keep you in his peace. Shalom. I'll see you next week.